<sighs> well, it appears that I have two hours to make this video because I forgot that I was going away for Thanksgiving and I usually start making this video on like Tuesday, but I'm going to be heading out of town. So that's uh, kind of where I am right now. I probably could have did something like put a note on my page and said that oh, I'm going to be skipping this week because I forgot. But I kind of see this as an opportunity to talk to you guys about the channel and stuff. I don't really break the fourth wall that much, so maybe this is a good excuse. Plus, I don't think I've ever really actually gone into the details of really what I'm trying to do on this channel and why. Like, there's uh, the description and, like, the about page of the stuff, but not really, um, I haven't really gone into detail about why exactly I made the channel, how it happened, uh, what I'm currently doing and why, and what I want to do later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to record this and put it to some uh, footage of me kind of walking around, just uh, show kind of what I've been up to in the series. It's sort of like a uh, an unofficial tour of like the, the place, you know, the the work and stuff. And plus it's kind of fun to walk around and and uh, sh just look at what you've done. So I guess I'll start off with a brief history of my channel. For those of you that don't know, I started this channel on May 21st, 2014. And the reason I did this is because I'd been playing Minecraft for a while. Probably I think it was like um, 2012 that summer that uh, one of my friends talked me into getting it. So actually me and a couple of friends all got it together, then had like a, a session where we're like, oh, this is a really awesome game. So we uh, played the game a lot, uh, looked around the YouTube, the YouTubes, <laughs> and there were all these... Um, Let's Players and stuff, there was like a Minecraft, Hermitcraft, all these things. All these people doing cool things, and things. I think I said things enough. So we were having fun, and doing stuff, and I really enjoyed going on, looking around for uh, tutorials of things, and building stuff that uh, I wanted to put in the worlds, because, you know, I started off building whatever, like the houses and the basics, doing the mines. And I thought, oh, I want to get more into this. So I got into, I got into it. And I started to realize that not everything I wanted to build was in Minecraft. Or not other things that I wanted to build were tried yet to the best, or to the quality, or to the style that I wanted. So that's actually where my first three builds that happened uh, on the channel came from. Just uh, the world that me and my friends were playing in. It was uh, the hallway from Zelda Ocarina of Time, the moon from Majora's Mask, and the Iwo Jima Memorial. A bit of a uh, strange grab bag of uh, things, but there were just situations on the server where I thought, you know, it would be really cool to have one of these. And so I kind of worked in the creative modes and stuff and figured out good, uh, builds that made me happy. And I thought, wow, these are cool. And I showed my friends there. They were like, oh, wow, those are cool. And <laughs> so I thought, oh, I should probably, like, put these out on YouTube. Because, like, one of my... F I noticed that sometimes there'd be people out there with only, like, a couple videos. But they would be like, oh, I, I happen to have this random build that was really cool, and I just wanted to share it with everyone. So that was kind of my reason to start. I basically had builds that I'd made... I worked on it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I'm really proud of this. So I put them out there and basically I wanted to share. I wanted to give back to the community because I really think the community gave a lot to me. Like the reason why I enjoyed myself so much in Minecraft was because of all the tutorial videos and all the people saying, wow, look how fun this game is. Look how many possibilities there are. You can do anything. Like, I was told all those things, and not just told, showed those things. Shown, whatever. So that's the first stage of uh, doing things. And after I made those, I thought, okay, I'll just let those sit, and you know, those could be, like, the the channel, the Red McNed channel can be, um, whenever I come up with something, I'll just post it here, and it can just be, like, a collection of things that I post over time. Just, like, no real... Uh, like, commitment to a schedule or anything. I didn't really think of it like that. It's more just, like, whenever I, something pops in the old head or something gets designed in the game, this is a good spot to put it and uh, share it with other people, give them a chance to find it, see if they like it or not. 
Well, around January, the um, the moon video started to really actually kind of take off. Like, the channel wasn't really doing too much. Like, I think it got like one subscriber, maybe two, over the course of the first like six or seven months. But by January, all of a sudden, I was getting like uh, ten views a day on that video, and it went all the way into like February and the beginning of March. Even I was getting about fifty views a day. And that kind of blew me away, because it was almost like, oh, wow, it's like my video went viral. Or like a, a mini version of that. Like, So that by then, by around mid-March, I think I hit like 3,000 views on uh, that video. And that's like, that's big stuff if you're like brand new and you're like, oh, I'll just uh, put this out there. And all of a sudden, it's like people like it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Another thing that happened over the course of uh, like January to uh, in February is all of a sudden I went from two subscribers to, uh, nine subscribers, which was a huge growth. And I looked at that and I kind of thought, oh, wow, people are actually, um, interested enough to subscribe to my channel and say, wow, this is cool. And I got the impression that people were like, oh, I wonder, wonder what else this person will make. So it made me, or if they weren't thinking that, I ended up thinking that myself, like, Wow, what would I what would I keep make if I what would I keep make if I was a channel? <laughs> These are the deep questions here, folks. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I did think, well, wow, um is there anything else I could do? Like are there are there any other thing any other things that I'm sitting on? Um skills I've worked on or uh techniques I've made I I haven't really seen anywhere else. So I kinda made a, a couple of videos on like you know, how to build mountains, how to work with water. And I was actually really proud of those uh, videos. So, but there was, a, I guess it was just one problem that I kind of ran into. And this is kind of where I started to uh, lose that initial sort of enthusiasm and start to uh, sort of go down in energy. Was that I was making these tutorials and I was actually really happy with them. But I wasn't really matching the success of the... Majora's Mask Moon video. And that actually frustrated me because that video was getting so many views and everything else was getting like no views. I kind of almost felt like I was um, not pulling my weight or not really fulfilling. It, it felt like false advertisement that I had this one video that people seemed to value a lot, but I just couldn't really churn out anything else. And I guess my... The reason I thought that is I was really focused on the feedback, which wasn't really, it's it's probably not a good idea. Like <laughs> it's, it's good to hear feedback and stuff, but if that's all, if you're like, no feedback must be bad feedback, that's not necessarily the case. But I started to do things like question, like what I was really doing and actually kind of hit, took a hit to my uh, self-esteem a little bit and thought, wow, I wonder if. Maybe this is all I had. Maybe I just kind of peaked for these things, and uh, that's all I have. So, oh, another thing is I noticed that my subscribers, I'd, I'll have to admit, I kind of got caught up in the numbers a little bit in the game. And so early, too. Like, not even to the double digits yet. And I was like, oh, subscribers, subscribe. Like, because <laughs> I was going from nine, and I was like, oh, man, wouldn't that be cool if I got ten? And, like, that's such a huge deal for some reason. Like... I, well, I remember it was because, I don't know, it felt like a milestone of some sort. And I, I guess it was. But it ended up taking like a month and a half, almost two months, before I got to from 9 to 10. And I drove myself crazy just staring at those uh, numbers, like, each day. So that, combined with uh, poor views, the way, the way I saw it, I didn't think I was really making an impact on anything else. I interpreted all of that as, well, I'm not really doing good here and maybe I should stop or something. So I finished my, uh, my last tutorial video and that was the, that was the whirlpool one. And then I took a trip to uh, Los Angeles to meet with some friends of mine who were trying to put together a gaming group that they had christened Point Oh Eight Gaming, and it was led by a Twitch gamer that's also a pretty good friend of mine. He goes by the name Maximus Beast Mode, and we talked a lot of stuff. A lot of uh, well, what what he's up to with his gaming, what I'm up to with mine, 
why we're doing it. I told him I wasn't having fun with it, and he said, man, that sounds terrible. If To play games and to not have fun... Like that sounds like some, or to to have to play games and to not have fun while doing it. That sounds like hell, man. And like, for some reason, that stuck that stuck with me. Like, like, man, you are right. <laughs> so we hung out, had a really good time, and I think that sort of break was really uh, a good thing. And it turned in, it led into another break because I had to go to uh, another place to help my mom move somewhere, and I had to stay for like a week. And I don't think they had internet or anything yet, so I really. Um, just had a lot of time that I would be there just by myself. And I guess that's what I needed because I had to soak up everything that my friends said, everything I experienced on YouTube so far, my very short <laughs> career so far, if you want to call it that. And I kind of really had a lot of time to think and to think, well, what do I want? To, what am I doing here with this channel? Like thinking like, well, am I good enough for this? Like, is this what I want to be doing do I really have what it takes? But then I'm, I, I think something clicked because all, all of a sudden I was like, "Wait, what am I? What am I talking about? What, have, what do I mean? Do I have what it takes? Like, what does it take? What am I even like? Wh what? What? Like, this is a gaming channel. I it, it's for playing games. It's for having fun, sharing cool ideas. It shouldn't be this stressful. So really, I, I thought, oh wow, maybe I need to." Uh, I really need to focus on what's going on here. So one of the best things that came out of that week is I did a lot of kind of journaling or whatever. And I decided to really figure out what my motivation was for having the channel. And I think this is probably one of the most important things I did. Because before that, I didn't really have any idea of what I was really trying to do other than the fact that I wanted to share things that I was making, which was good. I, I still like, I still believe in that, but I also had these other strange things. Well, like, wouldn't it be cool if I built an audience and had a bigger uh, channel and stuff? And I really had to kind of ask myself truthfully, well, why do I want that? Like, it's one thing to share things and people can have it if they want and whatever, but to like, to justify having a bigger, you know, more people interested in what I'm doing, I felt like I needed to have a, a clearer goal or um, I don't know, mission statement or whatever. So in the course of doing that, I kind of figured out some really cool things, which became the blueprints for the goals of the channel and how I do things. One thing that I was really worried about, or something that really uh, troubled me, is that for the most part, most whenever I played uh, Minecraft with my friends, or if I watched uh, servers of smaller YouTubers, I noticed that people got bored a lot. Or like they would play it for like a month or two, and then the the real diehards would be left alone, which would turn into like basically a solo survival thing, and then they'd eventually leave. I never really had that problem. Like maybe I'd get burned out sometimes because I like would literally spend hours and hours and hours per day on the game, and you can get burned out on anything. But I always kind of found ways to keep myself entertained and uh, create content that, like on my on my own in the worlds that I I played in, that made me want to keep coming back. And for some reason, my approach just seemed different. So I thought, well, wait, that's maybe that's something that I could uh, help out with. If I can take this game, which a lot of people look at and probably think, well, it's kind of it's it's been like five or six years. It's run its course. Let's go on to other things. A game that people held up so high and said, wow, you can do anything with it. Like I, I still believe you can do anything with it, but I think that there's a perspective that really helps those possibilities become more apparent. And that's really where the whole thing of um, giving context to the things you build comes from. Like, it's a very simple thing. But if I could champion one thing, if I could really say that my play style is significant for one characteristic, it's that everything I do or try to build, I try to connect it somehow with everything that already either has been built or the landscape I just kind of try to justify its existence. I don't just throw up something random. Like, a lot of those big servers, they started to lose appeal to me because it just seemed like a hodgepodge of, like, these are really cool things. How are they connected? Like, I was a big fan of, um, like, the, the first Bethesda game I played was Fallout 3, and I played that probably sometime after starting to play uh, Minecraft. 
But I was just really taken in by the fact that the world was so dense and that there were things that connected to other things and it was like this world that you could explore. And I started to realize, wow, I actually play Minecraft like that. Like I'll I'll make a village, I'll make another village, I'll kind of wonder how they interact with each other. And then I'll say, well, there's a third thing over here that they're aware of. And then like what I would actually do on my friend servers is I would go around, like whenever I built something, I'd hide a couple notes in like chests and stuff, sort of like a traveler's diary. And it'd be like, note number one, note number two. And then like, I'd go to my next build and then like have like note number three. And then like, I just like have a narrative that kind of is like someone's wandering through all these things. I actually don't really know anybody else who does that. I, there's got there are other people that do that. I can almost guarantee it. I'm not the only person that tries to connect things together. But I don't really see it that much on YouTube. And the people I play with, I don't really see it that much at all. It's like I I guess I approach it more like um with Dungeons and Dragons or like looking at like you're making an RPG or like you're you're constructing a world where an adventure could happen. And that actually gets me really excited having the whole prospect of like, oh cool, there's this area. What's going to go in it? Okay, this is cool. This is in it. What else should go in it? And like that's the reason with like um that's the reason why I have the actually the the saga of Red McNed. It's supposed to be like a prototype of basically what I want to stand for as a gamer or as a as a minecrafter. I want this to be my solution or my proposed solution for how to make Minecraft interesting again. The things you build in it, just try to justify them. Just try to give them some sort of backstory. Before you know it, you're actually building a pretty complex world. Like if you build like three or four things and you try to connect them all together or just say, well, this is here because of this. And then you force yourself to say that to a second thing. And then you think, well, how are these two things going to interact with each other? Like, what sort of things would happen? Just like, it doesn't even have to be that good. Like, I'm not really worried about how good a build is. Or like, if you're an awesome builder, if you're an awesome storyteller, it doesn't really matter. Like, that. the fact is that just the act of trying to put things in the world and trying to feel things out narrative-wise or just an attempt to justify why you did something. You don't just do something without purpose. All of a sudden, you're kind of building an investment. Like, you're investing in this world... And it's starting to have meaning because of it. Like I think a lot of people get bored because they they lose any real meaning to what they're doing. Like they they start to question why they're even playing. They're just saying, "Well, I'm really running around. I built this and I built that, but really, that's it." Like that's I hear that a lot actually. So long story short, this is my best argument for a solution to not getting bored playing Minecraft. And I must say that I'm in episode 29 now. It's been almost seven months. I actually haven't lost interest in this uh, series. In fact, if anything, I've just been more and more interested in coming back and putting in a video. Like, I've I've noticed I've been willing to do more and more in each episode to, like, really flesh things out. And I'm actually excited to record. I just don't really have as much time in the day to record. Otherwise, I'd be doing it a lot more. But I feel like for that alone, there's something to my... Uh, to my theory on this. And I really want to see how far the saga goes. Like, I really do want to fill out the place, have lands and their own stories and their own stuff. And like, I don't know, maybe this will turn into an adventure map or at least a place for an adventure to happen. And not a lot of people do that either. Now, come to think of it, like making a uh, survival, making an adventure map in survival. Like, the only people I know who really do that, like, are Smellic. He had a couple series where, like, one where he did it on his own, he did a survival adventure map making, and another one with an SMP, which was a really cool idea. And that's actually really, um, really close to probably what, like, my dream would probably be, is to have a lot of people that are all, all united with one purpose. Or <laughs> one ring. No, just... If you had, like, um, a good group of people, like four or five people, and they were all on a server together, an SMP, and there was just one rule that everything that they made, they had to justify or give some sort of context to, just say why it's there. I think that would end up being a really cool 
thing to watch and to be a part of. I think it'd be really unique. I don't think a lot of people are really exploring that territory. And I'll tell you why I think it would be cool. Playing on your own is pretty awesome. I have a lot of fun doing that. This series, I have a lot of fun making these videos. The most tedious part is probably just the editing because my software isn't really the best. But something cool happens when you're when you have multiple people with the same idea working on something. People inspire each other. And also you get you get people to uh share things with. And I guess that's a really cool thing about YouTube is that like I can have this solo series, do stuff in it and then share it with you all. But it's really cool when you're on like a a project with someone else, which is almost like what being in a a multiplayer server is in Minecraft. It's like you're all working on this one world, you're working on it together. And whether you realize it or not, you're being inspired by each other. And I think if there was one hope that I had for the the future it, for this channel is one thing to keep the saga of Red McNed going as long as possible just to see how far I could push it, push the ideas of it, and maybe eventually turn it into some kind of adventure map. So it means I probably have to learn about that. And the other thing is to possibly get a group together or find a group of people who are really interested in playing in that style. Like people can do whatever they want as long as they give context to what they build, or at least make an attempt. So like if someone makes something, like, well, that's cool, I ask them about it. Like, hey, that castle over there, what's up? Like, oh, this is like a, this is the kingdom of this region, and uh, they trade in, um, I don't know, uh, rock. They really like rocks. And then you think, oh, cool, I'll make a kingdom over here that uh, you, trades in uh, wood. Lots of wood. Maybe they'll do business. <laughs> cool. They'll have to have a trade route. <laughs> Maybe there'll be uh, an alliance there. Oh, then that's... I think that's really cool. Like the whole... Um, like before you know it, there's two people making a story together. They don't, it's not even a... It doesn't really even have to be a, a conscious decision. Or you could have everyone do their own thing in places. And then have like a central hub that's sort of like a... Uh, a travel town, or a uh, Hyrule vill- town, or have places where they uh, the places interact, or you can have uh, quests go from place to place. Like people can have side quests that wind through your builds. I think that's the kind of thing that can only really happen on a multiplayer server that has everybody interested in that style of playing. Like I'm attempting it here, but progress is much slower with one person versus with four or five. But long story short, once again, that is really something I'm interested in. And actually, if you know of anybody who plays like that, who whenever they start building, it's not just random, random time. Like they try to make a world and a story. Let me know, because I'm actually really looking for channels like that. And I actually don't really know of that many. And who knows, maybe if enough people get together, they uh, they might want to do something together like that. That that would be uh, that would be something that I would very much like to be a part of. So, are you satisfied? Is that all the information that you want? Do you want more? Are you not entertained? <laughs> uh, well, I will say that um, this is this is getting a lot more fun. Like the first videos were a little bit clunky. I have to admit, I didn't really know what I was doing. My flow was a little strange. But, like, what are you going to do? It's like the first time you you play. It's like, all right, you have a microphone. Talk into it. I purposely tried to start off not making any cuts or anything. Just, like, have a uh, just solid playthrough, no interruptions. I eventually sort of ditched that because the stuff that I want to accomplish requires me not spending a lot of time doing things that are minutia. Although, if I do make something, I always want to show how I did it even if I don't show myself literally building it. So that, I guess that's that uh, tutorial maker that's still in me there. I don't want that to really go away. I guess that's all I can think of right now. If you have, a, if you have any other questions or comments about what I'm doing here, uh, feel free to uh, let me know. So in the meantime, enjoy your holidays or whatever you do uh, this time of year. I'm not going to be going away to the end of the year, so I guess I shouldn't say that, but... Next week I'll probably have a a video proper, or an episode proper, with actual uh, building and stuff. But until then, this has been Red McNed, 
and I'm much obliged.